So good evening. Tonight I'm gonna make a video about on how to use the MB Tile Catalog website. This is a website which is well, was created in German in the first place. And uh, they basically have listed all the MB parts drawings which came off the original Mercedes-Benz DVDs and CDs like in the late 90s and early 2000s for the better part. And they may have had some other sources. And if uh, it was actually Pierre who, uh, you know, featured this, well, he didn't, he didn't feature it, but he suggested that people would use this. And when you land on the website, which is mb info, I will put a link in the description for this website. First of all, you're going to wind up on a German website. The thing you probably want to do, first of all, is to select your language you need or you want to look parts up. Chris, we have advertising. And they call it Mr. Parts Club Info. That is uh, a link to uh, a website which features aftermarket parts for Mercedes-Benz. And now we're here at the main part. This is the assortments. I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to have to zoom back out if it lets me zoom. Yeah, it does. So you can see we have, uh, let me see if I can get them both lined up here properly. Oops, that was the wrong button. We have car, cross-country vehicle, van, truck, bus, Unimog, MB, track, and smart. Now, what you want to click on, whether you're looking for engine, transmission, or car parts, what you're trying to locate, if you're looking for a part and you're trying to find the part number, is you have to do the first selection is car for vehicle or in your language it would be always the first one and let's just say we have an m117 engine you see i'm not in the middle here so we're missing this on the bottom you can see this on the on the bottom we actually have all the i hope that we go a little bit further up here we have all the different models we're going to get to the second i'm going to show you first on how to load locate your engine parts. Mercedes-Benz has divided this into four categories and um, this here is all chassis related. This would be everything that goes inside the car whether it is seats, fender covers, uh, hoses, I mean anything that is in the car. M is only for engines whatever is engine related and that's where it gets confusing. Sometimes you have a part on an engine but you cannot find this here and I will show you on how this works and then you have automatic transmission and manual transmissions so this is the four main groups Mercedes-Benz does everything in groups with these systems the power system engine power system transmission power system axle and so in steering and power system is uh, for the newer vehicles this year basically includes everything up to 1998, I would say, for the better part. Let's go to engines. Let's just say you have an M117 engine. And uh, we click on here. And sometimes this website is a little bit slow, but it will get us there. So we're now in the model designations. And now you see here. You have an M111, 30, 133, 137, and so far and so on. You have OM numbers here, 607 OM. Um, if your number is not showing up here under one of the M numbers, you have to go here to M. And this is where most people get frustrated and probably confused and they say, I cannot find anything. And here you can see now, we have now in the picture, all of the engines from 100 on to, I think, what is the last one? Let me go down here. I think the last engine are the M272s and M189s and M80s. 
M80, 130, and M120s, and then of course you have the M119. So this will be the engine what most people are gonna be looking for. Let's say we have a, for the engine selection now, you need to know your three digit, six digit code. So this would be for a, say like on my car, it's a 117.968. On Clay's car, it is a 117.986. So, and I can show you both of them because it is rather difficult. Let's go to the M117, locate the first one first, the um, 450, the 4.5 liter engine. And you will see here that it just says here M117 4.5, but you have then a 986 market Europe and Japan. That is not the one we want. We are looking for the M117 USA version of Clay's car, which is right down here, which is 117986. And now what happens is the structure of what follows here, the groups is the same. And the groups here, as you can see them, let me zoom a little bit out. Uh, sometimes YouTube plays a trick on me here with the the way they crop the videos and you may not be able to see all of them. You have to group engine housing, moving parts, timing, injection, air cleaner, power, steering pump, refrigeration compressor, that's your AC compressor, intake and exhaust manifolds, electrical equipment, engine lubrication, engine cooling system and engine suspension now let me give you an example say like you want to locate a part on your intake system and you know you have the airflow meter there and let's see if we can find the airflow meter in here or not and then we're going to take a look at an injection and then timing you can see the website is slow loading a little bit slow and now they come and what they do is now you have subgroups. These subgroups here are listed then and you have to look now for the specific one where you think. So we're, we're looking for the airflow meter and see if we can find it. And we can see here we have one lower and upper intake and we have a lower and upper intake. So now what this is because it said 117.986, but it didn't give us the model year, which means it includes all model years with that engine number in it. So on some of the 986 engines, that's now the 4.5 liter, uh, which was made, I think, between 76 in that version until 1980, you're gonna have either this intake manifold system or this intake manifold system. And you can see here's the donuts. You have the uh, connector here for your vacuum stuff. You have the bolts. And when you scroll down here, you have numbers on each one of these parts. And you will find the numbers here. Whatever, whenever you have a Mercedes-Benz number with an A in the United States, we do not use the A abbreviation or part of the number. And I wanna show you this. Um, I have one of my favorite um, Mercedes-Benz dealerships is mbpartshouse.com and they're out of Ohio. I hope I, I am, no, I didn't spell it right. mbpartshouse.com. I don't know if that spelled with a dash. No, it did get us right here. MB Parts House. And now I do the thing here, say like there's a screw plug here, which is a Nancy number. Um, well, let's just do the A numbers. I want to show you this. So you search for a number. All the parts in Germany at the central factory or the warehouse, they are starting with A for automotive. That means it's a, it's a, a car because the truck numbers and so forth and so on. You can see now the A number didn't yield anything. And if we delete the A out of it, and we do another search, but couldn't find that part either. That's funny. We see, we have anything in here. 
The car is probably too old, but we will give it another try here with another number. Let's go with this here, the eight intake manifold, the entire intake manifold, and try it this way. This is unrehearsed here, so what you're seeing is basically on how this works. So now this is what most people will encounter. So that A number is not available at all. We can't even find it. Let's see if we can find this number. Couldn't find that either. Um, let me see what would be a good one. The gaskets. Gasket is 134. Let's take the gasket, the manifold gasket left and the manifold gasket right. It will also tell you the original part number and then if it was replaced, like in this case here, this has a newer version of it. And we're going to use this one. Let's see if we can find this. Uh, Mercedes-Benz, the dealerships, um, they won't have parts in their database. So this actually came through. This is now a discontinued product by Mercedes-Benz. So you can get no longer get the intake gasket manifolds. You need to mount the intake manifold to this. And you can see this here, they're listing this without the A number. Some websites will let you do a search for it with A number and others would don't. Let me see if we have the old one, if that is still available, the first part number. Um, yeah, and what I was saying with the uh, Mercedes-Benz dealerships or Mercedes-Benz in general, see, it has no A number and it probably has no longer, or that number is going to come back invalid too. Yeah, so you can see for the original gasket, they have nothing in there anymore and the uh, actual replacement gasket is discontinued. And let's see if we have the same issue for the left hand side of the gasket because this is more one of the more important thing that interestingly is available so you can get the left hand gasket from Mercedes-Benz but currently you cannot get the right hand gasket and you have to have either one of them let's see if we can get the old gasket the original one what that comes back with sometimes it will tell us that the uh, that the parts have been replaced and that redirects us from the part number I have put in here, which was, let me see, what was it? We had a 0580 and that was replaced by the 28-80. Now let me explain here the Mercedes-Benz part number system real quick. This is just a rough um, idea on how this actually works. Mercedes-Benz uses three numbers, three numbers, or three digits, three digits, two digits, and two digits. For almost everything there is at Mercedes-Benz, even for equipment like machines, assembly lines, and that sort of stuff, um, from the simplest light switch they use for, for maintenance purposes, uh, all of it is cataloged in this structure. And the first three digits always uh, indicate the originating component or main group this came from. So in this case, in this case, this is a part which was primarily used or exclusively used or introduced with the 117 engine. Now you have parts, um, say like they start with 116. With the 116, it could be either W116 or it could be the engine number M117. That makes then only sense when you know what part you're actually looking for. 141 is the first subgroup, which would be the intake manifold, which correlates with 14, which is, uh, I think, group 14 in the maintenance manual. But don't hold me on to this here, but I believe that's how that worked. And then you have 28, and 80 that is the four digits they break into two parts where the latter one is the fact that it is a manifold uh, intake gasket for that particular model left hand side and then 28 or the original one was an 0580 um, that basically will tell us that that was the previous version so they assigned it then so they had then 
several other gasket versions left hand as well from 05 until 28 when that was the replacement or became the replacement gasket so this is how you can roughly um, on how this works i usually use this place here mb parts house sells the this is a mercedes-benz dealership in ohio i forgot on what town see it just tells us this here no it doesn't and they have actually the best discounts i would have to look up one of the packing slips on where they were located in ohio and um mercedes-benz instituted the system a few years ago where they offered this to mercedes-benz dealerships to sell parts via a website under their name or whatever name they wanted and these parts are being shipped then from the central warehouses here in the United States or Germany if a part is not available here. And you order them here. <coughs> the same part here listed for $21.29. If it is a Mercedes-Benz part, say like at Pelican Parts or any of the other uh, automotive online places where you can buy parts which have original Mercedes-Benz parts available, they will charge you the 2750 which they have indicated here and here you can get it for 2129 so if you're looking for a mercedes-benz part and you wanted to get that cheaper than what pelican or the other guys sell it for then my recommend recommendation would be mbpartshouse.com or on some parts other mercedes-benz dealerships are cheaper that's just uh to throw this into the mix here but let's go back here to our system so we have now located the manifold let's just say we're still looking actually for a part we wanted for the um, intake manifold but it is part of our um, you know for the timing uh, for, not for the um, for the airflow meter and let's see if we can find the airflow meter system here. So now we have the fuel injection system. So we can click on this picture and that will get us another subgroup. And now here, we actually have the airflow meter shown here. Upper part and this is the lower part, the boot. And here you can see the two different types of throttles which were used, whether you, you, you had the one uh, the first, the earlier assembly of the lower intake manifold or the latter one. This would be for the latter one. So we can find 83 here. And 83 is also listed here. They have a 0314 and an 0514. And there's no further explanation here. So that means now we have to copy this over and take a look at this and see what the website he actually says at the dealer to see if this is bringing anything up or if this is going to be completely do we still have internet okay so now i'm back here so the airflow sensor came back and it will show us now actually it's a discontinued product and then we see if the other one is available I had to make some changes to my internet here because the router we have is not uh, fully compatible anymore with the new iPhones and the new iPhone is not compatible with the Wi-Fi for the laptop because that thing is so old and the most up-to-date item I have is the iPhone. So this one is discontinued as well. So what this means is what I was trying to say is that Mercedes-Benz basically discontinues the products with a certain model year ending. And right now, that transition is 1984. And you can usually see this when you go to the websites of the parts places. And you can see here, they still have models here and this, that, and the other thing. But you can see the years are no longer there. And um, this is basically all the parts they have listed or the, the cars they have listed here. 
Let me see if we find a 450 SEL. And the 450 SEL has already fallen out. And the transition point for this right now for Mercedes-Benz is model year 1984. And that means if a part comes back here, like it did here with this particular, which is discontinued in red, then you have to get, you have to go to Mercedes-Benz Classics and send them an email with the parts you need and they will try to allocate those parts for you. Uh, you may suffer a tremendous sticker shock uh, when they come back because they may have to be hand built or they have to do a small production run on them if they can get them. But that's basically, uh, they would be available. Your best option in this case then is to find a salvage yard or eBay, either one of the two, to get the parts you actually need. And that was the issue we had with uh, Clay's switch here on the throttle body, because this is nowhere listed in here and you can see there is no switch associated with it. So now the same is for any electrical part on here. You can see they have listed the old switch number four but then you go down here, there is no more. There is no number four. And because sometimes in the 1980, they changed the system and now it gets interesting. If this is an electrical part, say like it is on the engine, but it is an electrical part. They have here electrical equipment listed and you can go in here and take now, look at the drawings or in the subgroups. You have the motor, the alternator, attachment parts for starting motor or ignition system, and a TDC sender unit. This is the unit they had, uh, which lives off, that is the diagnostic socket. They had the first one, and this is the OTC sensor actually for top that center zero degrees, which they get off pin number two on this car. Uh, when you have an oscilloscope, you can check on what your advance or retardation, retarding is on the ignition system by hooking up one channel to um, your spark plug. Um, usually it's uh, cylinder number one and the other goes, the other input to the uh, oscilloscope, the second channel, would go on to pin two. This way you have a reference pulse at zero top dead center, and you can see then on the, um, on the oscilloscope on where your advance or retardation is, then you don't have to use a timing light. That makes it a little bit easier to adjust this because this has still timing adjustment to it. But there's nowhere our switch in there. Of course, engine lubrication, air cleaner, and so far that is uh, clear. And then timing is basically the timing chain and the valves. That's what they're talking about here with timing. This is where you would find your guide rails, the chain tensioner, and that sort of stuff. The chain itself it will tell you which one you need. And they also show the pins and screws and what have you here of what you need and what you don't need, including the chain link if you needed to order a separate one. But if you expected to find under injection where we just came from, the, yep, actually they do injection system. We have the linkage here for the throttle body And we have the, we should have the injection nozzles lines and the injection nozzles with the cups which you need to hold them. That is also listed in here with the particular parts. This was the direct injection, the electronic fuel injection system they had with the uh, throttle body in the middle. And this is when they changed it over to the K-Jetronic with warm-up regulator. And um, this was the system which used the valves to do the regulation on it. And this is the one for 1980, which Clay has with the uh, frequency valve, but they don't call that a frequency valve. 
that is 324. See where we find this here, timing valve. They call that the timing valve. So it's not the frequency valve, but it is correctly called the timing valve with the pressure transducer and the pressure or the uh, damper, the, uh, basically the fuel pressure regulator or damper. And you have one here that was originally mounted here. That part is basically the same and it has just been moved over here. That's what that indicates. Before it was on the output side of the fuel distributor going over into the warm-up regulator on the earlier versions. Then they connected the warm-up regulator directly to the fuel distributor and they moved the damper or the pressure regulator over to the, in, in conjunction here with the uh, timing valve. That was just something I wanted to show you. So this is basically how you look through it. Now, in order to find our switch, we have to go back. And this is where this gets real tricky. Now we have to go to the actual W116450. So now you look up, this is the numbers you have on the trunk. So we're going to go to the 450 because that's the one Clay got. I'm just using this as an example. And here we have the 450 SEL 11603 standard market Europe and Japan. Special edition Europe. Um, the special edition is the armored vehicle. That's what that means. And then we have the um, 450 SEL for the United States. 116.033. You always need to know these six numbers. And now you can see here you have now everything which is basically on the chassis. And you have to look now under electrical equipment. And this is where this gets really, really tricky. Because they had four, three different or four different versions of this car in the 1970s. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen subgroups with the drawings, with the explosion drawings. And you can see this, you have all sorts, all the connectors, all the pins, switches, and what have you. Then the computer models. Here you can see this. This is actually the fuel injection for the electronic fuel injection. Um, and then here, that is the ignition unit here, ignition coil, uh, the fuel pump relays are in here, the over voltage protection relay, and so far and so on. You also have all the parts here. Now, let's say we want to locate this part we were looking for for clay. And now we have to go all the way down to the last picture because it is the last year where the 116 was made in 1980. And here we actually find his computer he got for the K Jetronic or any car who had the J K Jetronic really in there with the oxygen sensor. And but we have no indication of where actually the switches for the throttle body we're trying to locate. We can find it. And so this is the where you have to call actually the dealership and explain them what part you got, um, you know, to look at this. These pictures are not easy to zoom in, but you can see all of these drawings you have up there. All of these parts are listed here. And you can see when you scroll down on how long this list is. But this is basically it. And with the transmission, it is the same story. So here under the model number, you will find all of the particular systems. Now, when you go to fuel systems, the injectors are with the engine. Okay. In the fuel system, we have, when we click on the subgroups, you have the tank, you have the, the different fuel lines you have going, the different version of the tanks, the different fuel distribution systems they used, uh, including the diesel with the diesel injector here. Um, first pump assembly, then they had another pump. This is, I think, this is for the M110 engine for the 2.8 liter. And this would be then the one where they had to retrofit with the cooler. 
So this is basically, you have to know the different models available and you have to understand of what model you have. Whatever your car is gonna fit these explosion drawings, that is the explosion drawing or the parts drawing you actually have to use for this. And that is somewhat difficult if you have never worked on a Mercedes-Benz before. Now let me go back and let's just say, what do we have here? I mean, that is all clear. The electrical equipment and instruments is one part. Now you have another electrical system here. This is a little bit cumbersome too, but this is usually where you can find the switches for the windows, the motors for the switches, wiper system. That is the wiring harness, basically, depending on it. The particular seat heater stuff and switches as they pertain in the doors, the light assemblies, rear light assemblies, and the antenna. So it depends. Sometimes you can find a car. This is the center console switches here. And uh, with the different sockets they use with it, relays, and... Uh, the seat heat in this particular instance on those cars. So that is usually listed under electrical system if it is inside the vehicle. If it is in the engine compartment, then you will have to look here under electrical equipment and instruments. That also includes your dash and usually the, let me see if we can get the dash here. And the switches, the top switches in the center console and your battery, main wiring harness. Um, some of them have extra wiring harnesses. This is, for instance, the fuse box here. Um, and this is now the stuff here, what is installed in the engine bay. Like I said, this, this was the version for the direct fuel injection or the electronic fuel injection they had. And then you have the instrument cluster. Uh, usually with the light bulbs, depending on what's in there. And you have the cruise control systems in here between the different models. And this is the different vacuum assist or the, the switchover valves they used between the different early k Jatronic models. And then that came then to this here. This was like a 78. And then you had this here. This was 78 too. And you can see here the throttle body. And you also have vacuum parts in this, even though it's an electrical system. And this is actually the one, um, see, this is the 1980, where they didn't use these little vacuum switchover valves anymore. So you have one, one version here, one version, two versions, three versions, four versions of the K-Jet Tonic, just for K-Jet Tonic, plus the fifth version, which was the direct fuel injection or electronic fuel injection system. Uh, for that 116 with the uh, 4.5 4 and 3.5 liter engines. Of course, control, what they mean by that, when they talk about control, that is the linkage system. That is from your accelerator paddle, uh, all the connecting rods and, and everything else what comes with it and goes to the engine. In this case, that would be a V8 here as well. They had different versions of this. This is where it comes out of the firewall. And you have to look this up to actually see what you got here in your car. You have to really, really familiarize yourself with your car in order to, to find the part you're looking for. And then the other one we wanted to take a look at, we go back to car and let's see if we can locate the transmission. And that would be a automatic transmission. And now you have here several numbers again, DCT, HK. The numbers you're gonna be looking for is gonna be the W, W3A or W3B on the older ones. And that you have to look up in your code and you can see this was a W3A04 Japan. This was just for the Japan. That is a 722.004. So they're, they're basically coded by these numbers here. The 3B is also for Japan. So we didn't find it in here. That means we have to look under the W. 
and there should be a lot more and here they're coming so now you have to take a look here you can actually see the numbers and say like you have a 7.2235 that's the one i got in my 560 this would be one of these here let me see where i'm at i need to find north america the 3.5 Yep, no, that's your. See, this is this is really difficult. Here they are, North America three point five. So they use some North America and South America. This is a W four A zero four zero USA version. I actually got in my five sixty SEL, and now you can go in here, automatic. And it goes under the group of 722.3. And here you can find all of your parts you need for your transmission. From torque converter over all of the parts which are in your the bands, brake bands, and the valve body assembly. So here you have all of the details on it, what's in the valve body in its variation because it covers the entire 0.3 line so if you have a 3.5 a 3.4 you will have to then see what you got um, and then you can find them here so this should give you an idea i know this video has been rather long and we have to splice them together but i have wanted to go through this and explain this for people who have not uh, been able to find anything on this website and as we can see is this is available chinese english french german italian japanese then we have this here portuguese russian Sp spanish and in turkish so if you can speak in either one of or read either one of these languages you will be able to locate your parts and um, with that, you have a great night. And I'm supposed to be meeting Clay tomorrow to uh, get some more work done on his car. So we will have some more videos coming up here. With that, you have a good night.